Hey everyone, this is Pastor Brett Strohecker at New Beginnings Church in Middletown, Pennsylvania. I want to continue our discussion now from where we left off last time. It seems that everybody is looking for meaning and purpose in their life. And sometimes it feels like there's something missing on the inside that we need uh, to fill a void. But there's also uh, some shame and some guilt that sometimes builds up within us uh, because of a problem that we have on top of searching for meaning and searching for purpose. And that problem is a small word that has a huge impact on every single person that is living today, has lived in the past, and will live in the future until Jesus comes again. And that word is sin, S-I-N. Three-letter word, very small, but has a huge impact on, any, on everybody. And the problem is this, you know, we don't sin because we are sinners. It's because that we are sinners that were prone to sin. Let me explain this, okay? It says in Psalm 51, verse 5, For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. So here, the psalmist, David, is, is confessing to God and admitting to God that he understands that we as human beings have this sinful nature within us. We're born sinners, and we're sinners from the moment that we're conceived in the womb. And why is that? We have a sinful nature because back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve decided to disobey a command from God. And since then, since then that was called the fall of man. Since the fall, we have had this nature within us where we're trying to rebel in many cases we want to rebel against uh, authority we want to rebel against god's authority uh because we feel that you know god has equipped us to be very smart with our minds and god has equipped us with a heart with emotion that uh, gives us desires and needs uh, and we try to cope with them the best way we can but a lot of times we want things our way we want to control these things and we feel helpless or we feel really unsettled when we don't have control over things so it is because of these things that we think we know better and and we're allowing our emotions to lead us that we are, have a sinful nature and that we're sinners and we are led easily into sin that's why when god created us he wanted us to have a relationship with him and through this relationship, he wanted us to experience the best that life has to offer without allowing ourselves to get bogged down in sin. So he set up rules for us to keep us on the straight and narrow and to keep us free from the shackles of sin. But we couldn't uh, live and abide by those rules. So we had the fall through Adam and Eve. And now today, we are sinners. So because we are sinners, we are prone to sin. And God even mentions this when he talks to Noah. After the flood, when Noah uh, is finally coming out of the ark, Noah gives a sacrifice to God, uh, giving him thanks for seeing him through and also for giving humanity another chance. And here's what God says when he smells the sweet aroma of his sacrifice. He says to himself, I will never again curse the earth, destroying all living things, even though people's thoughts and actions are bent toward evil from childhood. So there God says, people's thoughts and actions are bent toward evil from childhood. So we have to understand that God sees that since we rebelled against him in the Garden of Eden, we always want to try to do things on our own. And, and here's the thing. Uh, if you're a parent, you'll better understand this. And, and I'll put it in these terms. As parents, we want our children to grow up healthy and strong, but also to be safe and also have respect, responsibility, and have some common sense and common decency built within them. Uh, and a lot of times, as we're trying to raise our children in the right manner, sometimes they want to rebel against us, and they don't listen to us. I mean, how many times as a parent have you had to say more than once, or, or tell your child more than once, to do something? 
or to listen to you on some particular topic or situation uh, that you're dealing with your child with. It gets frustrating because we say, hey, don't do that. Don't touch that burner. That burner will burn you. Trust me, that is not a good thing to do. And what does a child do? Well, I want to figure this out for myself. So the child, when the parent's not looking, touches the burner, and what happens? They get burnt, they get an injury, and then mom and dad have to come to the rescue. See, that's that rebellious nature that's within us. That shows us right there. That's a perfect example of the sinful nature that's within us. We always think we know better. We always want to experience stuff for ourselves. We always want to challenge the rules that are set before us. And oftentimes that leads us into trouble. So since we have that within our nature, we, we often will try to do things that get us in trouble and cause us to sin. And that sin separates us from God. Even the prophet Jeremiah talks about this. He says in, in chapter 17, verse 9, The human heart is most deceitful and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? So Jeremiah is admitting, wow, we're capable of doing some bad stuff. And we all see that. You know, people's lust for power, people's lust for acceptance, people's lust for other people, uh, you know, especially like between men and women, you know, that kind of lust that comes together in those relationships. You know, people always feel that the grass is greener on the other side when oftentimes it's not. And, and because of that, uh, we're willing to do anything that we can uh, to satisfy this lust, this need within us. Uh, and uh, sometimes if that, that need is overwhelming, uh, it's an overwhelming temptation and we can't control ourselves, uh, a lot of times things that we do to satisfy that need can get worse and worse and worse until you know, we've seen some really terrible examples in history where people have done some horrific things. Uh, and that have impacted negatively the lives of thousands, sometimes millions. So we do have this wicked nature within us. And that's what God wants us to realize. You got to keep this in check. You got to keep this rebellious nature in check. Because the more you rebel, the further into trouble you'll get, the more shackled and more confined your life will be because you're going to be confined and shackled within this sin. Well, the alternative that God's trying to offer to us is that if we're obedient to him and we follow his guidance and his direction, he's going to lead us away from the things that will uh, tie us down and that will shackle us and that will imprison us. And he will offer the freedom that we are desperately looking for. It says in the New Testament, where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What is liberty? Freedom. Freedom is what we all crave. Freedom is that natural, inherent right that God has been given, has given to us. It's an unalienable right. They talk about it in the Declaration of Independence for crying out loud. The founders of the United States realize that we have a creator who has given to us and blessed us with unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that's what God wants to lead us to. But people have it turned around. People are buying into the lie of Satan where Satan tells you, you don't want to follow God's rules. They're too confining. They're the ones that are going to turn you into a goody two-shoes and you're not going to have any fun. That's all BS. It's bull crap. It's a lie from Satan. And why is Satan lying to you? Because he's the one that wants to shackle you. He's the one that wants to confine you. He's the one that wants you to be miserable. So he's the one that says, if you follow after all these desires and these lusts and you fulfill them and, and you see them as needs, they're not really needs. They're choices. They're wants. But Satan disguises them as needs. So we have to admit what is in our nature and we have to admit this nature to understand 
ourselves so that once once we understand ourselves we know what's in our nature and it helps us to better relate with other people and build stronger relationships so we have to understand this truth about ourselves that is found in romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned all fall short of god's glorious standard so we're all sinners and because we are sinners we sin it's not the other way around it's not that oh we sin so that makes us a sinner no because we are sinners we are prone to sin and that's why satan is always constantly poking at us he's saying oh let me just irritate you let me let me hit on your weaknesses let me find the chinks in your armor let me lead you astray let me lead you into misery let me lead you into bondage let me confine you and trap you in what you feel you need and i'm going to tell you that you need it when it's really you're given the choice of whether you want it and it's your wants that get you in trouble God takes care of our needs. It's our wants that get us in trouble. And it's the wants that Satan disguises as needs. So, because of this sinful nature, we need to overcome that in order to find a good life, a happy life, a life of freedom. Because a life of freedom is a life lived under God's guidance. The real confinement and bondage is a life lived doing whatever we please because we think it's something that we need when it's really only something that we want. So I hope this all makes sense because this is uh, a really breaks us down to what's within our nature and what we're battling against, you know. And, and the Bible will tell us that our, our choices are never free from this conflict. And I believe it's in Ephesians. Maybe I can find it here real quick. I'm not a good chapter and verse and book guy uh, when it comes to what's in the Bible. I know what's in the Bible, but I can't tell you what exactly the verse or the chapter or where you're going to find it. And, of course, now that I'm looking for it, I won't find it. But I can tell you that the Bible specifically tells us that within us here i found it isn't that cool uh galatians chapter 5 uh and this is down here starting at verse 16 so i advise you to live according to your new life in the holy spirit that is whenever we confess jesus as lord and savior of our life we receive the holy spirit and we follow the holy spirit's guide the holy spirit being that part of god the Trinity uh, that will lead us and direct us to what is going to be good for us and what will bring us happiness and what will bring us freedom. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The old sinful nature loves to do evil, which is just opposite from what the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Now pay attention to this next part. And your choices are never free from this conflict. So, here the Bible is telling us that the choices we face in life, the devil's going to be on one side saying, you want this. You want this. You need this. And those are lies because the devil lies to us constantly. He doesn't have our best interest in mind. He knows what his fate is, so he's going to take down as many people as he can with him. But the Holy Spirit's telling us, no, don't go there because it's, that's, in, that's going to lead you to imprisonment. That's going to lead you to confinement. That's going to lead you to misery. That's going to lead, take away your hope. That's going to bring you sadness. That's going to bring you grief and guilt and shame. See, God doesn't want you to live your life under those kinds of feelings in those kind of conditions. God wants to free you from that. And the only way we can be free of that is if we follow the Holy Spirit's guide and we recognize what our sinful nature is trying to lead us into. So 
this sinful nature that we've talked about here today is critical in order for us to leave and yeah to live an extraordinary life so we'll talk more on this uh, next time until then remember nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ